So I got Ubuntu installed. Now what? <laughs> hey everyone, what's happening? As you can see, we're on the Ubuntu standard desktop, but before we get started, I'm going to give the new people a chance to hit that subscribe button if they wish, and ring that bell if they want to receive notifications, and we are going to go ahead and get started on this. As you, now, this is a, a in, full install of Ubuntu 19.10, Ewan Ehrman. And uh, it's the latest version of Ubuntu at the time of this recording. Um, I did not do LTS because I have never actually seen a point of staying LTS on a home desktop. Um, there are some... Uh, there's some instances where LTS is recommended by me, but for a basic home desktop, I say upgrade every time they every six months. It's not a big deal, but I'm more on LTS and point releases in a later video. Now I'm going to be going over what comes out of the box with Ewan Omen on the full install because I did a full install of Ubuntu here, and. We're going to do uh, some adjustments I suggest you make out of the box right after install. This should be the first thing you do. So, first of all, we're going to go over it now. Of course, we have the status bar up on top. And to the left, we have the Ubuntu, uh, what do they call it? The Ubuntu dashboard or dock. Of course, you, we have some favorite applications that they've preloaded. I have made absolutely no adjustments except for screen capture, like installing my screen capture utility. So, but uh, here we are with um, Firefox as our web browser, Thunderbird as our mail client, Files is Nautilus. It's just Nautilus. I think everyone's familiar with it. If you're not, then it's just a basic file manager. And of course, Rhythmbox for a music player, which is a jukebox tile, style with a library. Um, LibreOffice Writer, Office, um, Ubuntu Software, which is your uh, app store type installer program. It's similar to like the Mac App Store. Then of course your help and your Amazon. Now this Amazon link is an affiliate link that helps you support the Ubuntu project. They get a kickback if you click that link and shop on Amazon. You can remove that. I'll show you how in a later video. Uh, but this is not the Amazon spyware. It's not the same thing. Now, um, first of all, we're going to go ahead and open up a terminal. And we're going to do a free man. Okay, now we're going to do a free man. And, whoa! That is not what I was expecting. I was ex actually expecting a little bit more out of the RAM. Uh, about... 300 megabytes more actually so this is really light for a for a gnome install which i'm not complaining this is a four gigabyte machine which is enough to run gnome apparently they've made some improve, improvements i didn't know about with this version um well let's go ahead also let's see what kernel we're running to uh 5.3 23 that's actually a very recent kernel and let's see what version of GNOME we're running. Do we have NeoFetch installed? No. There we are. And we're going to go ahead and install NeoFetch. And then we'll run NeoFetch. And this will tell us pretty much everything about the system. I think it's just installed. Alright. We're running GNOME 3.34. That's actually a very, very recent version of GNOME. So, apparently they've made some improvements for 3.34. So, good job GNOME team. So, let's go ahead. Let's show all our applications here. Of course, we've got the additional drivers right here. Let's take a look at that. Now I'm going to leave that open in a second. While that's searching for, we'll take a look at that in a second. 
And uh, of course, we have solitaire, your standard gnome suite, which is calculator, calendar, cheese, etc. Of course, Nautilus, um, Volagon over Firefox, Libre Office. It's not the full suite that comes by default. And of course, Mahjong, Sudoku. Yeah, your simple gnome install, basically. Um, of course, I'm using a proprietary driver for my Wi-Fi code. And that's basically your desktop. Just your standard GNOME desktop. Now we're going to go into some adjustments that I think you should make that I think are required with Ubuntu. Um, basically some uh, quality of life adjustments. And we're going to go ahead and dive right into that. So first thing we're going to take care of is the update cycle. Ubuntu and Canonical has a very aggressive update schedule, um, cycle and all that stuff. So um, we're going to go ahead and take care of that. And we're going to go ahead and click the show applications up here. And go down to the software and updates right here with the blue A right here. The other one is the updater. This is the settings. And we're going to go here to updates right here and as you can see by default it checks daily this used to be every six hours it was like it was constantly checking for updates and that got annoying um, so we're gonna go ahead and change this to weekly now with a static point release and turn my password with a static point release like Ubuntu once a week is just fine for your updates to run um, and then I'll I change this. It says when there are security updates. I always just hit display immediately. I don't like it downloading and installing things without my consent. That's just the way it is. And it says when they're display immediately. But literally, a lot of times I disable it and hit never check for updates. I usually check for my myself. But if you're one who forgets to update the operating system and need a reminder once a week is just fine. But we're just going to go ahead and disable it. Now, if you want to disable it and rip this out, that is entirely possible. Um, however, that's a different video for a different time. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and we're going to move on to our next one. I'll reload that. Now, the next thing that I suggest to everyone take care of is Ubuntu error reporting. Um, this is uh, basically how Ubuntu allows you to send anonymous information about crash reports, etc., to Ubuntu so they can quote unquote fix it. However, I find this rather buggy. It often detects app crashes whenever, uh, when there aren't any, and it often, sometimes it's like popping up every six, every minute or 30 seconds and sometimes it's just like yeah shut the heck up uh so i just find that that just disabling and ripping it right out of the operating system because you don't need it so we're gonna go ahead and remove that and it'll be a pseudo apt purge app ort and app ort app port dot gtk and we're gonna go ahead and disable Whoops, if I can type. Now it's going to come. And that takes care of app reporting. Now, a lot of people like to watch videos and video files on their desktop. Now, there is. Now, most Ubuntu and Linux distributions don't come with this installed due to licensing agreements and all that stuff. So you have to install the codecs and the decoders yourself. And the way you do that in Ubuntu is do a sudo apt install. And that'd be Ubuntu dash restricted dash add-ons. Now this is going to install the restricted add-ons that 
they can't include by default due to legal issues. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter and hit yes. And this is going to download and install all the codecs and others and a couple other proprietary things that most people use. Now the next step isn't exactly 100% necessary, but it's useful if you like configuring your desktop. And that is the GNOME tweaks. So we're going to go ahead and install GNOME tweaks and make a couple little adjustments for quality of life. And so we're going to go ahead and enter sudo apt install gnome-tweak-tool. And it might help if I can spell. <laughs> there we are. And this is going to install the GNOME Tweak Tools, which is a little bit of extra options that you can uh, have that aren't built into the GNOME Setting Center. So we're going to go ahead and go to GNOME Tweaks. Right here. And here's where you can like switch your animation and stuff like that. Well, we're going to go to Extensions. And we're going to go ahead here and change the desktop options. I'm going to disable the home folder. I don't necessarily need that display, displayed. I can also disable that too. So, and then of course you got your Ubuntu dock and your Ubuntu app indicators and etc. to turn those on. Um, and then of course here's all your other settings for your desktop environment. Most of these are not included in your settings center. So that is known tweaks. Now this next step is not hundred percent necessary as well, but it's helpful to most to a lot of users, and that's installing the rest of the LibreOffice suite. Now you have most of it pre-installed with a full install of Ubuntu, but you're missing no databasing, which a lot of people don't use. But and you're missing some other backend modules and some functionality that a lot of people might use. So I just find it just to install the rest of the suite. And what I do is normally just pull down the meta package and it'll install what's missing. So literally I I go uh, sudo apt install. Then I do a libre office. And then I pull this down. And we're going to go ahead and install the rest of the suite. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. Nobody wants to see a bunch of text fly across the screen. And we'll get into the next one when this is finished. Now that we've got the LibreOffice suite installed, we're going to now adjust our swap settings. And what swap is is your virtual memory. And uh, virtual memory is uh, basically RAM that's stored on your hard drive. If you run out of RAM, it starts moving things that are in your RAM to your hard drive to free up the RAM space for your running applications. Now, most times this is set up kind of cumbersome for most distributions. I'm going to show you what I mean by checking the... It. So it's a sys. If I can type, type uh, control, ctl, vm dot swappiness now it's going to say vm swappiness equals 60 now this is a default kernel setting and what that means is it's going to keep 60 percent of your physical ram open now this can be a huge performance hit, especially if you have like four gigs of ram uh, so a lot of the times you have to change this. So it's because it will slow down your computer because virtual memory is slower. So we're going to go ahead and change this. And you would modify this setting by modifying a configuration file in your system. It will be a nano. Oh, well, sudo first. It will be a sudo. We're going to use nano, which is a text editor. A terminal-based text editor. And most... Most distributions have nano pre-installed, so then uh, you're going to do a, a slash etc slash sysctl.conf. And then we're going to go all the way to the end. We're going to modify, 
Then we're going to just put vm dot this equals 10. Now, this, this is telling the system every time it boots, set that setting to 10. And that means it's going to keep 10% of your RAM open, which means before it starts moving things to your swap, it has to fill up 90% of the RAM before it starts doing that. This is the setting that I recommend. You can also set it to 0 or 5, but I always just recommend 10. And then we're going to go ahead and hit Control X, which now it's going to ask me if I want to save it. I mean, that would be a yes. And enter. Now, it's now, as you can see, it's still set to 60 here. And what we do is a sudo sys ctl vm dot wapiness equals 10. And now, if I run that again, it's going to be 10. Now it applies to this session. You also can reboot it as well. And that is your swap settings. So next we're going to be talking about firewall settings. And um, Ubuntu comes with a firewall pre-installed called UFW. And that would be a... And we're going to go ahead and check the status. So that would be a sudo UFW. So status. Verbose. And of course my password. Oops, I mistyped that. And of course it says it's inactive. So that would be a pseudo. And for some reason it comes by default off. Which I don't understand. Pseudo, apt, not apt. Well, pseudo ufw, enable. And there we go. Firewall is active and enable on system set setup. So now, now if I run that again, it'll say it's active and it's default deny any incoming outgoing blah blah blah. Now, um, this is the basic. This is basically what all you have to do, um, unless you want to create certain other rules. I'll go into UFW in another video if you wish, but that's basically all you have to do is just turn it on. If you like this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Also, consider following me on my social media links below. And if you really, really liked it, check out these videos that are listed on your screen. Have a nice day, and thank you for watching The Penguin Revolution.